Um, we're going to hear from Ken O'Keefe. Um, Ken is an activist, he's a uh, former US Marine, he's a veteran of the Gulf War, and he led the Human Shield in action to Iraq. He was a uh, passenger on the Marvin Mamara during the gas uh, flotilla. Among other things, um, in uh, autumn 2008, he was uh, in the Free Gaza movement. Um, and uh, he founded Aloha Palestine um, and uh, is uh, dedicated to uh, purchasing a ship capable of carrying hundreds of passengers at a time between Cyprus and Gaza. But I'm sure we're going to hear about lots of those things. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken O'Keefe. extended this uh, challenge and invitation to any of my perceived enemies or real enemies to debate with you on the subject of Israel 9-11 or any other contentious subject anytime any place and uh, you can bring as many cameras as you like uh, if I had more time I would, I would expand on on many issues but there's a limited amount of time but the first thing that I will say is that as easy as it is and as well deserved as it is, to sling arrows towards Israel, uh, I actually find much more disdain for my birth nation of America, for Britain, for the EU, because without these collaborators and without these treasonous and pathetic traitors within these governments, which are defiling every bit of honor that any of these nations ever held, but inherently collaborating with the Zionist apartheid Jewish Israeli state it is only because of them and only in turn because of us that this is allowed to persist we can sit here and shift the blame over to Israel all we like but at the end of the day our traitorous governments are the ones that are allowing it to happen and and this is to me really the def definition of where we're going to go in this world because it's much easier for us to shift the blame elsewhere it's much harder take it on yourself and work with people who are serious to do what needs to be done. When it comes to the European Union, I can tell you that while they give aid money to the Palestinians, which is effectively a form of infiltration, bribe money, in which they pay Palestinians inflated salaries to work within the NGOs and basically go with the program, you have drained the best of the Palestinian pool to go into these aid organizations and institute a policy of aid dependency, of charitable dependency, which is harming the Palestinians more than most of us understand. And this is exactly why I have been focused on trade for a long time. And mostly, not because this is my idea, I have simply listened to the Palestinians. If you listen to the Palestinians, they are not going to tell you we need more aid. That's not what they're saying. What they're saying is we need freedom of movement. We need for you to do your job to get your governments off our back by backing the Israeli regime at every turn. And you're not doing it because they're still doing this. The European Union is doing 25 billion euros a year in trade with Israel while they <coughs> dole out a little bit of crumbs and bribe money through aid. This is carrying out a policy that is destroying the fabric of the culture of the society at a base level. Effectively what's happening, and especially in Gaza, is that the people of Gaza, the parents of Gaza, and as a father of two, Palestinian kids by the way, my wife is Palestinian, my children have Palestinian blood, but even if I wasn't with a Palestinian woman, and even if my children had no Palestinian blood, I am a Palestinian. My heart and my soul is with Palestine, and it matters not where my blood comes from. What we are doing is instituting a policy of charitable dependency, which is destroying the fabric of the culture, or at least an attempt to destroy the fabric of the culture. The Israelis know this very, very well. What happens when you subject people like you do in, the, in Gaza to conditions whereby they cannot protect themselves nor their family. Imagine you as a parent not being able to protect your children, because that's the fact, that's the reality. No matter how much 
a Palestinian may wish to say that they can protect their children, they cannot. F-16s and helicopter gunships are flying overhead all the time, and those can rain down bombs and rockets at any point, and massacres can occur any day. That's the reality. You cannot protect your children under these circumstances. That's the bottom line. So you can't protect your children. Not only that, but you can't even provide for your children. Why can't you provide for them? Well, because the Israelis are doing just fantastically with 25 billion euros a year in trade with the EU. They're doing fantastically. How much trade is the EU doing with Gaza? How much? Zero, basically. A few carnations are flowing out every now and then to Holland. That's about it. They don't need aid. Who wants to live on a handout? Who, self-respecting person, wants to live on a handout? Does anybody in here really want to live on a handout? Are you that lazy? And this is what we're subjecting the Palestinians to. The Israelis know this. Now, to even debate whether or not it is an apartheid system is to enter into an insult to our collective intelligence. It is beyond apartheid, according to Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. Do we need to ask any more people than that? And we can ask more if we like. These two people, are we going to challenge their integrity? Are these people anti-Semitic as well? Is that going to be the base charge against them? These people have said that it is worse than what you experienced in South Africa under the racist apartheid regime of South Africa. Do we need to go much further than this? But if we need to go, we can go further than this. It's not even apartheid for just the Palestinians or Arabs, even amongst the Jewish population. It's not all the Jews that are treated equally. Definitely not. Definitely not. The Ashkenazi Jews, which have no real claim to this land at all, and that's a fact, the Ashkenazi Jews are the ones that you'll find in all the, has in the high positions of power. The Sephardic Jews, which actually do come from that region, are not in the same level of consideration at all. That's a fact. Never mind Ethiopian Jews and other Jews from other parts of the world. Don't even tell me that the treatment for them is the same as an Ashkenazi Jew. That is ridiculous, and the facts make that very, very clear. Now let's get into the Arabs that live there, the so-called uh, Arab Israelis. Palestinians, let's make it clear, Palestinians living in an occupied land. There is no question at all that the rules are not the same for them. They cannot marry a non-Jewish citizen and have them become full Israeli citizens. We have a million different examples of why this is an apartheid state. And the best argument that the Zionists have is that technically, according to the original definition of apartheid, which is based on a racial prejudice, technically it doesn't fit that description. But Thankfully, for the Rome Statute and the International Criminal Court, the definition has been redefined, so the same type of system implied or used against a national or ethnic group applies or can be defined as apartheid. It is an apartheid system. There is no debate on this. For me, however, the question is not whether it is horrendous, whether it is unjust. If you can't see the injustice of what's happening, then you are blind. It is obvious. I think Palestine is a microcosm of the world. I really do. In fact, the reason why I got involved with Palestine is not because I had some emotional attachment to it or some anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish tendencies. <coughs> I had nothing of the sort. My interest then is what it is now. But strategically, I came to the conclusion that the way of Palestine is the way of the world. This is probably the biggest problem that's stirring up more problems on a global level and in any other single issue has been for a long, long time, which is the real purpose of Israel, to maintain perpetual conflict. That is the real point of Israel. There is no genuine interest in peace. For us to believe, Shalom, that there is an interest in Israeli power structures for peace is for us to be believe that these people are the stupidest people on the face of the planet. Because there is no way that a people would carry out the kinds of policies that Israel is carrying out if you wanted peace. Are you stupid? No, they're not stupid. They don't want peace. And they certainly don't want equality amongst all the people inside of so-called Israel. Because what would that mean? It would mean the end of the racist, apartheid, Jewish state of Israel. That's what it would mean. And they know this. Now, let's be clear. If it was possible for an Israel to exist in which it truly accepted all of the people of that region, especially the original inhabitants that were kicked out and murdered in mass, if it could somehow legitimately recognize all the people of that region as brothers and sisters, 
and make sure that laws existed in which every last person was treated equally, then I would shift my wrath towards Israel to an opening of seeing if this nation could conceivably act with any human decency. But there is no indication that there is any genuine intention for anything like that at all. So, if Israel is inherently a racist state, if it is inherently an apartheid state, then I want no part of Israel, it has no place in this world, and it must in its current form, if you want me to use some inflammatory language, in its current form should be destroyed. Just like the UN in its current form should be destroyed. Just like the American Empire in its current form should be destroyed. Just like the British Empire in its current form should be destroyed. Just like every bones about Jewish people, but the bottom line is this. The Jewish state, that's not my expression, the Jewish state of Israel is therefore acting on behalf of the Jewish people. You, like the Nazis, have now a special obligation. The decent Germans, the so-called decent Germans of World War II, Nazi Germany, what did they do? What did the decent Germans do when the Nazis came to power and started to institute their policies? What did they do? They didn't do enough, did they? Did they do enough to stop the Nazis? No, they didn't. And what are the Jewish people doing right now? Are you doing enough to stop your racist, apartheid, genocidal state? obligation brought upon you just like the Nazis brought upon the decent Germans. Good luck to you because the way of Israel, the way of Palestine is the way of the world. And you can mouth at me all you want. Good luck to you because guess what? You are making enemies of all the people, not just me and the falsely accused anti-Semites. Mouth, I said nothing. Um, I'm going to ask you to leave. I said um, nothing. Security, if you could, uh, if you're going to escort this man up there, I'm not going to. I heard that coming out of his mouth, and I saw. I said uh, nothing. I'm being mouthed. Uh, do you want me to repeat what you said? I said nothing. I said nothing. Because it began with uh, go and ended with yourself. He makes Jewish Nazi comparisons. That's anti-Semitic. I said nothing. Oh, 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 Let me pause this, let me pause this for a minute. 